Today, I'm going to try to catch them all in Pokemon Legends Arceus. And right off the... Oh my goodness, Professor, what is that hat? He's even got a strap to make sure it stays on. Just embrace the bald, bro. Either way, Professor Laventon offers up a strange selection of starters, and I, of course, pick the best one, Oshawott. And if you disagree, that's not okay. It's fundamentally true. We then get our first mission to capture three Pokemon, including Bidoof, which nobody has succeeded with before. How is that possible? Our cranky boss is so impressed that we get a brand spanking new uniform and not the hat. Since we can actually take the hat off, I go to the barber who cuts my hair longer, which is a real talent. Who's got two thumbs and looks amazing? This guy. Now that the game actually opens up, I started to catch everything in sight. No, 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 no. I started exploring as much of the Obsidian Fieldlands as possible and stumbled upon a Pichu. I figured out early that the best way to catch Pokemon is to stealth around and feed them berries, and I also accidentally caught an Abra. Overall, my first couple hours of exploring were very successful. Henceforth, this Wurmple shall be known as Bugene. After getting our first star rank, we have a battle versus Mai, and I'll get into how I hate the battle system in this game later when it's more apparent, but we also face our first Alpha Pokemon. Pokemon. Da -la 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 -whoop. After a while of trying to catch it and failing miserably, I decided to just take it out with Oshawott, and once we do, we get to meet Weird Ear. That is one antlery boy. We then meet Irida, who's just dressed in stuff you'd bring to the beach, and Adamant, who looks like he lives at Hot Topic. And I'm glad I'm not Silene, because that's way too much paperwork for one person. Okay, so I clearly can't play the flute since I'm holding the end of it, but now that we got Weird Ear, we can get around way easier, and I'm glad that Stantler got the respect he always deserved. Now, I will say that the the thing this game succeeds at the best is the hunting and catching of Pokemon. Munchlax, what are you doing? At this point, I'd spent about six hours just exploring and catching Pokemon, and between that and filling out the dex requirements, I could have a blast 100%ing the dex to every last detail. It's exactly my type of OCD completionist gameplay, and it feels really rewarding to find rarer Pokemon like Chimchar and Magikarp. Uh, how is that Gyarados flying? I spent about another hour to upgrade the team by hunting for some rare Pokemon, and in the process, I evolved my Oshawott into Duat, Chimchar into Monferno, and Magikarp into Gyarados. Then after defeating Irida's Glaceon, it was time to take on the first real challenge of the game, Frenzied Cleavor. Now while I praise the exploration and catching of this game, the Frenzy battles are not my cup of tea. However, unlike the standard battle system, which I think is just fundamentally flawed in general, my opinion of the Frenzy fights is just a personal preference of mine. I'm sure a lot of people really enjoy these fights and find them fresh, but this style of gameplay does nothing for me personally. So fortunately, this one ends up being pretty easy and I claim myself the insect plate. Is that a free shiny Ponyta? Now that we beat the Frenzy Pokemon, there's a chance that any Pokemon we find could be an Alpha, and of course I stumble upon an Alpha Wormple. But I also managed to find some great ones like Alpha Pichu, and not long after, I managed to evolve Eevee into Sylveon. That's seven evolutions to go. To give the game some more praise, the Move Tutor system is absolutely amazing. You seem to unlock more moves as you rank up, and they've taken great care to make each Pokemon interesting and fun to use. The team is looking good, boys. After spending more time in the Obsidian Fieldlands, I found myself an Alpha Stantler. And I'll be honest, I got really carried away and spent about 11 hours in the very first area before moving on to get our next mission to calm down Ursa Luna. And to do that, we move on to the Crimson Marshlands, and to be honest, I wasn't impressed by the aesthetics my first time around. And to set up the second camp, I faced three Stunkies at once, which I actually think is pretty cool, kind of like the totem fights in Alola, but paired together with the broken turn system, it just feels unfair to play. We then head on over to the familiar Salacion Ruins, where we have to face off against Volo, and honestly, the worst part about the battle system is how a Pokemon gets to move as soon as it's sent into battle, meaning the opposing trainer always gets a free hit in as soon as you knock out one of their Pokemon. It just feels cheap and unfair, in a way that's even worse than the new move order system. We're then tasked to find the lost fragment that's been stolen by these three idiots. I'm not fond of this outcome, but at least it's still better than plowing the fields for the galaxy team. Okay, too bad that Team Galactic's practically gonna own the soul of your great-great-grandkid. As I continue to catch them all, I stumble upon some actual pretty sections of the bog that maybe like the area a lot more. I even managed to find myself a Turtwig by this oasis, and finding these secret little areas made my stay in the bog feel that much more special. It's then time to face off against Ursa Luna, but luckily, we've got Chunky who's got all the elemental punches. Chunky barely hangs on on 11 HP, but after a few ice punches, we receive the Earth Plate. Then as I continued my journey to catch them all, my switch crashed. Let me know if you guys had similar issues. It's then time to face the second frenzy fight, and I really enjoyed this one a lot more. It felt more action-packed and fast-paced, and kind of had elements of a rhythm game when dodging the pulses, and I overall was just pleasantly surprised to have a good time earning the Meadow Plate. After my victory, I spent a few more hours catching Pokemon, and I gotta say, I'm really liking what this team's looking like. 
We then move on to the Cobalt Coastlands, and oh my goodness, Isui and Growlithe is so cute! We then meet Polina, who gives us dialogue options, but you can only actually pick the one to progress, so what's the point of multiple options? I love boats, Basket Legion's the best! We then have to summit a literal volcano, only to have to face off against these three dummies who get destroyed by Grottle. Hey, no one invited you, Tiny! Okay, attacking a guy's manhood is a pretty low blow, Clover. It seems that Tiny didn't enjoy that comment and evolved into an Arcanine, and I gotta say, Growlithe looks so much better than the new Arcanine. And now we gotta face this thing in a frenzy fight, but I decided to do a few preparations first, namely evolving my Duat into Samurott, and I always loved Samurott's design, so I'm fine with the fact that they pretty much kept it the same, except, uh, edgier. Some new members of the team include Cringy the Alpha Lope Honey and Alpha Magikarp. And this frenzy fight was honestly just more of the Cleaver fight, except this time with Lava. Arcanine charges at you, then you hop out of the way, it's not exactly rocket science, but much like rocket science, it's not for me at all. So I will very gladly take that flame plate and be on my way. The team, however, is looking based. Except for you, Lope Honey. Nobody likes you. Hey, I found Piplup. Happens to be the best first stage starter Pokemon there is. Not just my opinion. Once again, objective fact. Okay, another one of Diamond Clan's crazy eccentrics. I wonder what this girl's all about. What's that? You're telling me Melly's a guy? What the f- You look like even a slight breeze could topple you. Can you really beat Adamin? Bruh. We then move on to the Coronet Highlands, where we meet Ingo from the Unova Battle Subway, who seems to have been sent back in time the same way we have. We do end up having to face him in a battle in what I would argue is the first actual difficult battle of the run. Angry the Gyarados makes quick work of both Machoke and Tangela, but as soon as Gliscor comes out, it gets to move twice and just takes out Gyarados with a quick attack followed by a poison jab. I don't even get the option to switch in my Pokemon, and on top of that, it gets to use two moves in a row. Even when I send in Chunky the Snorlax, I get hit by two moves once again before I can take it out with a couple of ice punches. The battle system just feels unfair to play, and I wish they just stayed with the classics, personally. Wait, no, this is Sneasel's new evolution? It looks like they just dragged it out in paint. That's ridiculous. Oh, we actually get to ride it? Wait, wait a minute. Am I in the... <laughs> is that me in the box? <laughs> okay, that's gotta be the best part of the game so far. In the Highlands, I managed to find myself an Alpha Gabite and move on to fight the Frenzied Electrode. And I got really frustrated with this fight because I did it wrong the entire time. I thought I had to roll away from these balls and somehow throw the bombs at the electrode. I learned the way you're actually supposed to do it is to just run away from the attacks and then beat it in battle to be able to throw the bombs. Eventually though, I managed to figure it out and get myself the zap plate. Back in the village, I figure it's time to upgrade the team and I evolve Gabite into Alpha Garchomp. And just to show you guys how big this guy is, dude. Yeah, I know, Geo, dude. He's a big boy. Being about 25 hours into the game at this point, I figured I'd go back to some of the regions to explore them more with Basque Legion, and I found an Alpha Infernape that I caught and added to the team. But even with the Sinnoh All Stars in tow, my team wasn't complete. I had to get my hands on the antleriest of boys. And in order to evolve Stantler, you have to use Psy Shield Bash 20 times in either Agile or Strong Style. But after grinding it out on the beach, which sounds a lot dirtier now that I say that out loud, we managed to evolve Stantler into Weird Ear. Wait, what's happening to Bugene? Eugene evolved! Finally, it's become a Silcoon! Uh, buddy, that's a Silcoon, and I hate to break it to you, but Eugene's never gonna be a Beautifly. And Polion, you're coming with me. Whoa, I wonder what's wrong with Silene. No one, and I say no one, messes with the mighty Wurmple! Before we get to go snowboarding, Akari challenges us to a battle, but Chompy handles it with style. And so we find ourselves in what ended up being my absolute favorite part of the game, the Alabaster Icelands. Hold on a minute, is that an Alpha Lucario? Now, being that I enjoy the catching in this game the most, I actually really love the stealth mechanics. Throwing out a smoke bomb, figuring out what the Pokemon's favorite food is, and then trying to catch it is so satisfying when you nail it on the first try. Okay, I need Alpha Frostlass. I also just loved recognizing the geography of Sinnoh since Gen 4 is my absolute favorite. This gentleman here is Garrick. Almighty Lord of the Tundra, I like has done nothing to trouble with him. Sir, please try to keep your cool. Irida, he doesn't have a shirt on in the Tundra, he's de facto cool. I mean, just look at me. I look like an icicle freezing my nuts off over here. My musculature is hard and unyielding as ice. Think you can break through? Okay, Hisui and Zorua has to be my favorite Pokemon of the new ones released. I was a big fan of the original Zorua, so what's not to like? In fact, I was given some advice to be able to get an Alpha Zorua, and I spent the next six hours hunting for it, and did I find one? Uh, no. 
Of course I didn't. So in shame, I captured as many Zorwas I could find and evolved the best one into a Zoroark. What can I say? One of the best designs in Pokemon to date. We then make our way over to Snowpoint Temple. And the puzzle in here wasn't exactly difficult, but I love that they didn't hold your hand and you had to figure out that the statues are looking at each other in a certain order to be able to open the gates. And that really says more about modern game design than anything else. Oh boy, are we actually gonna get to soar through the sky? I believe I can fly. At this point, we've reached the fifth frenzy fight, and to be honest, Honest, this was actually the easiest one, which I'm really surprised to say. It comes at you with some of the easiest attacks to dodge in the entire game, and with that ice and rock fighting, it was super easy for Lucario to just come in and use Aura Sphere and end any fight I had to do against this thing. Let me know which of the bosses you found the most difficult down in the comments below, but personally, I thought this was the easiest one, and I'm happy we got the icicle plate. Is this Axel Boy some kind of monster in disguise? Buddy, it's Antler Boy. If you say Axel, you don't have to say, but never mind. Uh oh, this guy's become evil colored, and Commander Komodo thinks it's my fault. You're to be expelled from the village? Okay, Akari, you don't have to look so happy about that. I'll be honest, it felt pretty bad to do this slow walk of shame out of the village. They should have gathered everybody to see you walk out. That would have made it more dramatic. One man. One mission. No one will help him. Oh, you'll help me, Volo? That's actually great. Meet Kojita, knower of legendary Pokemon. Wait, we need to choose who's gonna help us between Beach Bum and Edgelord? Uh, fine, Beach Bum it is. We seek out the Lake Guardians to give me guidance, and on the way, I manage to catch myself an Alpha Gudra. Yo, Mesprit's got that big chillin' energy. Betty just watches Netflix all day. We then make our way to Lake Acuity, and here we have to face an Alpha Zoroark. You're telling me I spent six hours looking for this thing, and you get one for free? Ah! Anyway, we get to catch an Overquill when looking for a Zelf, though you managed not to die just as I ordered. Well done. That's right, I'm also doing this voice recording on my birthday, so manage to go another year without dying as well, Silene. But now it's time to make our way to the top of Mount Cornet. On the way, we're stopped by Benny the Mochi Potato Guy, who looks a surprising amount like Wally, and we find out that he's an evil ninja. He's got a Sneasler, which apart from being the ugliest Pokemon in all of his Suey, also gets to attack twice, kind of like Gliscor, and just destroys Infernape. Moody the Weird Ear, the most coveted member of the team, gets to take it out and decide the battle. But the real fight has only just begun, since Commander Kamen still thinks that we're the bad guy and leads off with his Braviary as we start with Furry the Lucario. An Ice Punch almost takes out the Braviary as it hits me with an Esper Wing and actually gets to move it twice and hit me with an Air Slash as well. Another Ice Punch takes out the Braviary, but it doesn't feel like a victory since Kamado just gets a free hit in with Snorlax to take out Furry. I of course then get to do the same and swap into Monkey and destroy this thing with a close combat. The oddest thing is that the battle system then actually works in my favor and I get to use a Poison Jab which almost takes out Clefable and I go down to a psychic. Preppy can then come in and destroy this thing with a flash cannon, but the game never actually tells you how the speed system really works. You can see what order the moves are going to be used in, but aside from being able to affect it by using agile style the way this golem did to use two double edges for some reason, there doesn't really feel like there's any way to affect it. After the fight, Kamado realizes his mistake and begs us to save the world, and who should appear but the ruler of space itself, Palkia, and wow, I thought they actually ruined this thing by turning it into a weird centaur, but I guess we get the good one. Now, it's my understanding that we got to catch Palkia because we went with Irida, and if we were to go with Adamin, we would have gotten Dialga instead. Get your big nose out of the way, Probo Pass. Oh no, not these three again. Oh, thank goodness they're leaving. Honestly, those three, what did they even come here for? It's almost like the game developers knew we'd hate them. The professor then gives me an origin ball, which I guess is supposed to be the master ball, but it looks a lot like a cherish ball. It's then time for us to face origin Dialga, and honestly, this thing looks super strange. And the boss fight was, in a way, actually even easier than the Avalog one, in the sense that it was easier for me to actually learn the patterns to be able to dodge the attacks. I'd also argue that this is the most fun I had with any of the Frenzy battles, which is hard to say since I really hate the design of this thing, but the fight was really good. Okay, our squad looks really weird. We look like we're going to a masquerade party or something. I can't tell what era this is supposed to be. Now that the main story's behind us, it's time to complete the Pokedex. Arceus, perhaps you've already heard this name. Yeah, no, doesn't really ring a bell. Honestly, Alpha Combi has to be the most beta alpha in all of existence. My first order of business was continuing my catching spree to capture every single Pokemon that I had access to. And one of the most annoying processes of the whole run was running around to try and find a peat block with Ursaluna so that I could evolve into an Ursaluna, which is apparently only possible during a full moon. In the Coronet Highlands, I find myself a Rotom, and during
during what was probably one of the shortest legendary quests ever, I found Darkrai and managed to capture it. This was actually one of the more disappointing things for me to learn, that the legendary quests weren't very legendary. They were just short fetch quests to get to certain locations and find the legendary Pokemon and then try to catch it. I did enjoy the cute flower cutscene to get my favorite legendary Shaman, and so came the time for me to evolve Sneasel into Sneasler, and I decided to bring this guy onto my team since I hate this Pokemon so much I need to try and find a place for it in my heart, even if such a place truly may never be found. The three late guardians have already had a main quest, so I don't mind as much that we just go and pick them up pretty much. What I say when I mean that I'm unsatisfied with these quests, I think is the fact that I've grown accustomed to the fact that you have to go through some kind of dungeon to find the Pokemon you're looking for. I certainly didn't have to do that for Heatran, and it introduced the concept of these energy shields that you have to throw your Pokeball onto twice in order to get into a battle with the Pokemon, a feature that I hate. You'll certainly see what I mean later, but for now, we capture Cresselia and Regigigas, which are pretty much just free to go to the location and catch. After which, it's time for us to make our way to Spear Pillar, where we find out that Volo's actually a bad guy? I mean, look, I was surprised that Volo was a guy in the first place, but I guess I should have expected Cynthia's ancestor to be a bad guy. And this is by far the most difficult fight in the entire game, maybe even all of Pokemon because of how dumb the game mechanics are. I start off with Nasty the Gardevoir and destroy the Spear Tomb with Moonblast, but of course Roserade comes in and uses an Agile-style move so that it can take us out right away afterwards with a Poison Jab. I go ahead and send Furry, who can actually just straight up one-shot this Roserade with an Ice Punch. In comes Volo's own Lucario, and he could easily just take us out with a close combat here, but for some reason, he decides to go for Bulk Up, which means I just get to take it out with a free, strong-style Aura Sphere. And that's about the best you can hope for in this game. If you can take out two Pokemon with one of yours, that's a pretty good trade, since obviously Arcanine's just gonna come in and take us out with a Raging Fury. I swap in Rumi, who can take it out with a quad-effective Hydro Pump, but then comes Togekiss, who hits us hard with a Moon Blast, but we can at least get some damage with Ice Beam before Rumi goes down to another Moon Blast. Now, for some reason I can't explain to you, Creepy gets two moves when he's sent in, so I decide to go for a nasty plot so that I can just take out this Togekiss. Then comes Volo's final Pokemon, Garchomp, but since it doesn't have a super effective move versus Creepy, it hits us with an Earth Power and we survive and can take it out with an Ice Beam. So you might think that that went pretty well. We survived with three Pokemon, but that's not the end of the fight. Volo actually summons Giratina during this fight, and you do not get to heal in between. Not only that, Giratina is guaranteed to make the first move here, and since it has Aura Sphere, Creepy can say its goodbyes. This means I've only got two Pokemon left, so I go ahead and send in Tardy the Dialga and go for an Agile-style move, which is going to let me move twice, but judging by that Ice Beam damage, we're not going to be able to take it out with a Roar of Time, but we end up getting a lucky crit, which I think is the only reason I won this fight. Or did I? You see, there's a third phase to this fight, and Giratina just takes me out with an Earth Power, followed by a strong style Aura Sphere. So this means that it comes down to Volo's last Pokemon versus mine, and it's Chompy the Alpha Garchomp. And since Giratina used a strong style move, I actually get to move twice here, which is probably the only reason I won this fight in the end. After my lucky victory, my Celestica Flute evolves into the Azure Flute. You're mine now. And so started the lengthy process of catching the rest of the Pokemon. First of all, the Genies. And Landorus honestly wasn't even that bad to track down. It was pretty fun. It's when we get to Tornadus that it really starts to get bad. I probably spent about half an hour trying to get to this thing, but it just kept knocking me down with its tornadoes. I would say that this was my breaking point. I was ready to put the game down and never play it again. I was so frustrated with this. The only thing that got me through was the fact that I really wanted to make this video. I kept getting into situations like this where it seemed like I'd be able to actually battle it, but then it would just run away. I was so relieved the moment I finally was able to get it, I couldn't actually believe it. But little did I know at this time that after catching Tornadus, it was going to get a lot worse with Thunderous. In practice, I wasn't actually as frustrated, nor did it take as much time, but it was definitely more annoying to have to do this on water. But eventually, I even managed to conquer Thunderous and get into a battle with it. Once in the battle with all three of these, it was a piece of cake to catch them. After bringing the three back to Kojita, she tells us that there's a fourth genie. They introduced a new one in this game. Wait, no, 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 no. I don't know 
what it is about this thing. It just rubs me the wrong way. And to be fair, this thing was about as bad as Tornadus, but it didn't frustrate me quite as much at all because I had so much practice at this point. Now, I don't think the Therian form is quite as creepy, but it's still super weird. My next move was to track down the remaining wisps that I hadn't gotten on my journey so far. It took me another couple of hours, and while I was doing it, I decided to get a few quests out of the way, for example, the quest where you managed to get Manaphy and Fion. And oddly enough, out of all the legendary quests, this was probably the one I enjoyed the most, because it actually had some mystery behind it. It actually felt a lot like one of those early internet lies, where it would be like, bring these specific Pokemon and your DS upside down at midnight, and you'll find a Mew. But finally, after a great many hours, I found myself the last Wisp. Which means I was able to capture the final Pokemon I needed for my Pokedex, Spiritomb. Well, I say that, but there's still one more Pokemon to catch, and we all know who it is. And so for the occasion, I put on my best suit and made my way to Mount Cornet, and at least I'm not covering those holes with my fingers. And all of a sudden, the stairway to heaven lay before me. But where am I? Boo, you little shit. Anyway, I found myself in an encounter with the creator of all that is. I was being slapped left and right with Draco Meteors, but to be honest, this was also one of the more fun frenzy fights. It didn't feel like as big a deal that there were tons of moves to learn and that it took me so many tries to beat because this was the final boss. It was appropriately difficult, even though some of the attacks just felt straight up unfair. For example, this attack that shatters the screen and instantly kills you. Only ran into that once, but it got me. Eventually, I also had to face the Grand Creator in a battle, and I decide to use an Agile-style move to get to move twice with Lucario, and judging by the first attack, I should not get the KO here, but once again, I got a lucky crit to get me through the fight. My favorite phase of the fight was the one that I actually felt like I got the hang of, where you jump over this pulsating wave and then just throw stuff at Arceus. And it kind of seems like this phase lasted the last quarter of the fight, but once I get him, Arceus gets the last word, but we get the win. And that's how I caught every Pokemon in Legends Arceus in just over 44 hours. Look, I'm no expert, but there's gotta be a faster way to get a horse.